Well, it's Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where we answer questions. Boy, we got a lot today, Angel, so we got to jump in. All right, Joe. There's been a long line of health problems in my family, and I'm wondering if it's a generational curse. Can you shed any light on what that means or how I can break it? Deuteronomy 28, a whole list of curses. Uh, but Galatians 3.13 says we've been redeemed from all those curses. So it doesn't matter what they are, and there's a whole list, every kind of disease you've ever imagined. But we've been redeemed from them. So you have to use your authority. You have to pray, Lord, you know, you got to speak. Lord, I've been redeemed from the curse of law, which is poverty, sickness, and death. Now that stuff's going to my family and you have to take your stand. And we've done that when, uh, <clears throat> told the story so many times. I remember we had to go to the hospital. My 18 month old baby had passed out, uh, Sunday we're at church and, uh, we drove two separate cars and I get a call that my baby's in the hospital. She's 18 months old. My doctor says she's dying. She has spinal meningitis. I didn't know what that was. Well, 10 days in the intensive care. First, she's going to die. Then she's not going to die. Then she's going to be mentally retarded. Now she's not going to be mentally retarded. She's going to be totally deaf. No, she's not going to be deaf. So it's a constant war. So all I could do is just speak the word of God. My baby will live and not die. My baby has the air of the learned. You know, with long life, you're going to satisfy sure she's out of base. So uh, 10 days later, they let us out of the hospital. So we can't find anything else wrong with her. And so you have to fight the fight of faith. You have to believe God, you know, and that means you got to say what God says. Let the redeemed Lord say so, let the weak seem strong, that the poor seem rich, call those things to be not as though they are. The way we find on this planet where Satan is a temporary godless planet, he cannot handle the spoken word of God. You got to say what God says. It's not me. It's what God did for me. I've been redeemed. I didn't do that. God did that for me. The son going to the cross and being raised from the dead. So I'm redeemed from all the curse. Doesn't matter what they are. I'm redeemed from them. You know, I, I feel like most of us are all spending our lifetimes as an adult trying to overcome our past. <laughs> yeah. And um, so uh, one of the things is when you've been raised in a family where there's a lot of sickness or perhaps mental illness or poverty or poverty, you know, you just had a, or alcoholism yep. or, or drug addiction. Uh, uh, if you have a, a, a history of that and that's what you've been raised around, you you can very easily accept it as that this is just normal life. Um, for example, um, my mother was always drama, drama, drama. There was always drama, has to always be drama going around. And then I married drama unbeknownst to me because that was all I knew. And so then, thought that was normal. Yeah. And so then I had a, a life of, of, of drama as an adult for 23 years. And then when we divorced, I said, no, I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm going to have peace in my home. I'm not going to have to walk on eggshells here. This is going to be a home where everybody feels welcome. And so I had to make, I had to take some decisive action to change that pattern. Yeah. I mean, the power, the tools were already given to me, but I had to do something, got to do something with it. which is I had to get my temper under control. <clears throat> I had to learn that the fruit of the spirit is self-control. Mm. Uh, and we don't uh, like to preach that. No, we don't talk about <laughs> that very much, but so, you know, I had to apply what the word said to change that pattern. And I did do, I still have to, Yeah, it's a daily, Everybody. it's a daily thing that I have to do. Everybody can, can, can live that kind of a life, but particularly in sickness, I think, you know, you just, you know, you can get into that, Woe is me. And your yeah. first run to is the doctor. Uh, man, my mother, if you were bleeding profusely from a limb, she might consider a doctor. But, you know, we just we that wasn't something that we did. So it's not some, that's not my natural go to. Yeah. But my kids are more like their dad. And Lord, I, for a while, I had to ban WebMD because they were getting every known disease to mankind. And so. There's a balance in between the two. The doctor's not our enemy, but he's not our savior either. No, we got family doctors. I used a family doctor, but he's not my source. God's still my source. When I was a children's pastor, we used to do a thing every now and then where we have a knock on the door during class. 
And so somebody go to the door and this big old skanky hand would come in with his present. And then we'd have a voice behind the door that said, special delivery from the devil. And said, no, boys, girls, we're not taking this. No, we'd rebuke the devil, make him go back out. And so they're trying to get inside of him. You've got to make your mind up. Is this God? No, then resist it. Mm-hmm. No, that's in mine. God promised me that my testament, God promised me long life. And so my dad had 12 brothers and sisters and we buried all but one of them. Uh, but I'm still here. You know, I, I, you have to make your mind up. No, I'm going to live to the last moment. I'm going to wait till the trumpet sounds. I think I'll just hang around forever, but we'd have family members that would sit on the front porch. Well, I think I'm dying of this. I think I've got that. I think I've got this. I, I don't want everything. I've been redeemed from all that stuff. I got yeah, stuff to I mean, do. Jesus has done all he's going yes. to do. You know, now he, he's put the tools into our hands. Yes. Uh, and healing is one of those things. Yes. And so uh, you can, what I would do is I would print out every, a writer out every healing scripture I could get my hands on and put it all over the house and get that in your spirit. Start memorizing yep. it. Three and five same cards, thing paper if it's plates. finances or whatever, yes. whatever it is. Yeah. The answer that you need is in the word. Yes. So everything. So there you go. Good answer. All right, Joe, where is the line between faith and wisdom? I know we are to use wisdom in making decisions, but I also know that we need to use faith to believe God for things that seem impossible. I'm afraid of using wisdom as a crutch to not be in faith. Have you ever struggled with this? Oh, uh, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Uh, we got born again. You know, you're believing God for everything. You didn't know you could believe God. You assume when I grew up in church, whatever happened to you was God's will. If you got sick, that was God's will. If you had a car wreck, that was God's will. Somebody died, that was God's will. We go to funerals. Well, evidently God needed him in heaven. No, God didn't need him in heaven. He should have stayed here. And so we finally got spirit filled and got in the word of God. What does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says, with long life will I satisfy you, show you my salvation. Well, man, we had a lot of family members dying early. What happened that long life? Well, nobody claimed it. You got to claim it. Do you believe this is yours? Same thing about poverty. I mean, we grew up poor. You know, poor, poor. And uh, I remember when I was 17, I had a revelation. A poor person never hired me. Only rich people hired me. And I thought, when I got one of those revelations, God ain't poor no more. And so we all have those moments in our life where you realize something. The devil's a liar. From the day you hit this planet, he's lying to you. You're not going to make it. You're not smart enough. You're too tall. You're too short, too fat, too skinny, too dumb, wrong color, wrong culture, wrong language. He's lying from day one. The only weapon the devil has is a lie. That's why the Bible says the truth will set you free. Well, you don't, if you don't know the truth, you don't know what you're free from. They got to get your own Bible out and open it up and read it every now. If you just read a proverb a day for you know a month, that'll change your life forever. Just get in the word of God and realize, oh, I didn't know God said that, but well, he's been saying that for thousands of years, but you got to get into it. You got to have a hunger for it. You know, years ago, I heard somebody preach and say, they said the greatest thing you could ask God for is wisdom. So every day I say, God, if any man likes wisdom, let him ask of God. I'm, I, I'm asking you for supernatural wisdom, wisdom with my family, yes. wisdom with the ministry, yes. wisdom just with my steps. The thing about wisdom, I don't think they, they clash at all. I think wisdom gives me a focus for my faith. Yes. I think they go hand in hand. Yes. And uh, uh, I think they're like wonder twins. Remember the old cartoon, yep. wonder twin powers. Uh, but I think. I, I, I think, uh, you know, it's hard to be confident in faith without wisdom. Can't do it. So, so I think they go hand in hand. So for me, I ask for both of them every day. Well, we pray this every day. Our family, father, we ask Psalm 34, 11, father, we ask you to teach us to fear you for the fear of God. Proverbs 19 is the beginning of wisdom. So it starts with the fear of God. Father, teach my family to fear you. My kids, my grandkids. Everybody's married to my family. Teach my family to fear you for the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. With that wisdom, Proverbs 3, 16 comes long life, riches, and honor. So what do you want? Long life, riches, and honor. What do you want for the kids? I want to make good money. I want to live a long time. I want to bring honor to the family name. That's a promise. It's a promise. How do you get that? You need to fear God. Everything starts with the fear of God. Father, teach us to fear you. That is the beginning of wisdom. And also the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1, 7. So wisdom and knowledge come from fearing God. So they're tied, what Angel said, they're tied together. They're inseparable. You can't get one without getting the other. Yeah. So uh, I don't think they clash at all. No, yeah. they do not clash. Uh, Joe, I just want to thank you for putting out a new episode every week and answering our questions. I love your short videos on Friday. 
but these episodes help me know your heart even more. Thank you. Now to my question. I'm in a blended family and my husband's children are older than mine. They don't come around very often, so it's hard for me to make an effort in building a relationship with them. Do you have any ideas on something I can do to bridge the gap? <laughs> well, I don't think there's anything to do to bridge the gap. It is just what it is. Uh, for the first time in the history of America, we have more blended families today than core families. There's more mine, yours, ours, and we don't know who these are. And so you can't make somebody love you. Even God, the creator of the universe, can't make somebody love it. You have to choose to do that. Now, I'm going to be nice to you, and I'm going to be helpful. Uh, if you ask me questions, I'll try to answer it. Uh, and you, you, every blended family gives you're not my real dad. You're not my real mom. No, I'm not. I'm better than that. I'm the one to stick around. I'm still here. You know, the real one left, you know, sometimes they left, sometimes they die, but no, I'm here and I'm going to help you if you ask for help. Otherwise, you know, you're on your own, I guess. And so don't try, don't try to make something out of nothing. If they want a relationship, give it to them. If they don't, God bless you. Go with God. You know, I'm, I'm not against you. You might have a lot of enemies. I'm not one of them. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. So, yeah. And I think the best thing you could do is be consistent. I mean, they're adults. You can't force that's somebody. real good. Yeah. These are not two year old thumb suckers. These are adults. Yeah. And unfortunately, we see that quite a lot. A lot. I mean, everywhere, every weekend. And we see it in our own family. So. Yes, our own personal family. Yeah. yeah so. uh, when the angel and I got married, it's like, you know, some people, like, what do you do? Well, we're getting married. Well, for well, I think I think I like to wake up next to somebody and sit across the table with somebody, get in fight with somebody, and make up with somebody. Yeah, it's not good for a man to be alone. Genesis two eighteen, and God has not changed his mind. So I think everybody, if you lose a spouse, divorce, whatever, you ought to get remarried. Now, let me put a little addendum on that. I had one aunt that was married seven times, and she kept marrying herself, and she kept saying, "Well, I'm marrying the wrong person." I, and I told her, "No, honey, keep marrying you." You need to grow up before you get remarried. Grow up yourself because you're attracting who you are. You're not going to find it. You, you're going to find who you are. So you grow up, then you'll attract somebody more mature. And that was a whole seminar right there. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, all you can do is walk in love. You can't fix somebody else. All you can do is work on you. So, yep. you know, be the best you you can be. And when they come around, They'll, wow. be, they'll be sad that they didn't get to know such a cool, That's right. wonderful person. They're the one that lost out. You didn't lose out. Right. Exactly. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We sure love you. Thank you for our Mondays. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to oh. us. And uh, please uh, join us next week. And don't forget Joe's podcast on Wednesday and again on Friday. Yes. Y'all have a great blessed day. Blessings on you. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.